Welcome back to Inside Franklin Athletics. I'm your host, Jake Trueblood, here as always with my co-host, Nick Wilson. How are we doing today, Nick? I'm doing great today, Jake. How are you? Not too bad. Today on the show, we have a baseball player, Max Clark. You know the name. How are we doing, Max? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me, Jake. Thanks for having me, Nick. Of course. It's uh, great. Let's jump right on into the questions. Max, in high school, so this is only high school baseball, what is your most memorable moment? It doesn't have to be like your favorite play, just like memorable moment. Honestly, so far, it would probably be my first high school game. Um, I have been waiting to play with the same six guys, Jace Fowler, Drew Doty, myself, Xavier Brown, Logan Devonport, and Nolan Netter, since we were about six years old. Um, we grew up playing together. Um, we started at age six, and ever since then, we've kind of been a bond. We've been working out together every single day after school. And then, you know, COVID canceled my freshman season, so we, even, we had to wait another year. Yeah. So coming out that first game um, and seeing kind of all the families that I grew up with, all of the town, um, and those six guys, that was kind of something special to me, um, something different. So I would definitely say that first high school game, um, I've never been more excited, more happy for a game in my life. Definitely. I, uh, I definitely think the this class, my class, the mm -hmm. senior class this year is such a strong class. And I think it might be like underhyped because of, you know, just the hype surrounding you that yeah. people don't realize just how good this class is. I mean, we've got – Jay Spowler, who's going to a really good baseball school in mm -hmm. uh, Indiana State. We've got uh, Logan Devonport going to Northern Kentucky, another good baseball school. And then um, Drew Doty, a bunch of other players that are just great. We were looking at the wall at Mercer Field last night when I left the game, and it's got all of the collegiate athletes. Yeah, yeah. There was, like, a whole slot filled up, and then the other one has, like, two names on it. And it's yeah. like, this thing is about to have, like, eight names yeah. like, next year. Like, yeah, yeah, It's yeah. crazy. That's wild. That uh, first game you mentioned – can you, like, run that down for us? Like, who was against, like, what you were feeling that day and just everything? Yeah, so we opened up against, um, I want to say, I don't, honestly, I don't even remember who the first game we played was that year. Um, oh, right, okay, it was Ron Colley. Uh, we opened up against Ron Colley. Um, I was on the mound. Um, the nerves were wild. I've never been more nervous, but more excited, or most excited at the same time. Um I came on the mound a little shaky, definitely because of the nerves, but kind of just seeing everybody have my back was awesome. Um, ended up striking out the side, and then we we fell down 2-0, and Logan Demport came up, and then me, Jace, and Nolan were all on base. So then Logan just decides to hit one over the scoreboard, and we trot around the bases, and it was like we were eight years old again after we hit a coach's pitch bomb. So um, just that was amazing. We ended up winning the game like seven to six, I think. Um, it was a really good start to the season. So just having all of that kind of flood back into the memory path was amazing. You mentioned that it was the most nervous you've ever been. And obviously you played on some big stages. You played mm -hmm. in an Adidas showcase. Is that mm -hmm. what that was called? Yeah, East Coast Pro. And then it was a like a Team USA thing also. Yep. And then, of course, your Indie Bulls are always doing a bunch of stuff. So mm -hmm. what are like the main components that – what are the differences between high school ball to like a travel ball or one of those showcases? So I feel like high school ball is, I feel like the energy is way different. Um, you, you know everybody you play against, you know everybody you play with. Mm -hmm. um, you've been growing up playing against these kids for forever. So there, it's a lot of like personal battles and that makes it, I love high school ball. I think it's honestly way more fun than summer ball. Um, so to kind of just step up with a different kind of energy is amazing. Um, and summer ball, I feel like it's a way more like it's w there's way more pressure. Um, you're stepping onto a field with 30 pro scouts every single time I step on a field. Um, we step in the biggest stages, and don't get me wrong, that's so fun. Um, it, it is definitely like they're one and one, one A, one B. Um, but I also I have way more fun playing high school ball just because it's kind of you just get to play with your friends, you get to play with your yeah. buddies who you grew up with. Um, but the, there's, a, there's a different type of energy in summer ball, and I don't really know how to explain it, but it's just you want to go out there and compete for yourself instead of compete for your town. Okay, yeah. Um, so, like, the ability to put myself out for Franklin or put myself out for Indiana on the national stage is different than competing for Johnson County, competing for our team alone. So the, there, there are some differences, but I love both. But high school ball is just something different. Um, it's amazing. Definitely. What are like? Is are there any rule changes in travel ball, or are, are you allowed to do anything else there? Uh, I swing more wood in summer ball. Um, oh, so you you use a wooden bat sometimes? Yeah, almost this entire summer I will swing wood, and every single tournament except for one last year I swung wood. So anytime you're pretty much playing on a national stage that have pro scouts there, 
they're going to have you swing wood just because that's what you'll swing once you get there. Right. Um, so like the East Coast Pro that Adidas showcase was wood, area codes, uh, Team USA is wood, um, all like national level team tournaments are wood. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. I got you. Yeah, you uh, mentioned that you think that high school is more fun than travel. But would you say competitively that travel would be more fun just since it's like all around better athletes? Oh, yeah, 100%. Like you, you go to a thing like that East Coast Pro and every single dude you face is a potential top three rounder. Like every single person on that field is getting looked at by a number of pro teams. Um, and then like on my team alone from the national team, we have – uh, 26 commits, 24 of them are power five. Like, we have three top 10 players in the country. It's wild. Um, everything, that's like, that is the main difference. The competitiveness is way more, like, just narrow. Everybody is, everybody there is good. No, there's no outliers, um, unless it's on, like, a positive side. So just the ability to kind of go out and compete with the top in the nation, that's, that's a different feeling. So shift gears here, what are your goals for our Franklin baseball team this year? Um, obviously, we want to repeat and win conference. Um, I would say that's on like the bottom of our list, but I think it's something that we can do and that we can do comfortably. Um, I feel like we we are now the team with the target on our back, so everybody we're going to get everybody's one, but that's what we like. Um, when we get thrown off, that's kind of when we're like struggling. But uh, I, think, I think our main three things right now are to win conference. Um, we want to go compete in county. We're going to be short on arms with having conference this week, but I think we'll get to the championship game and we'll play uh, Center Grove nicely. Um, I don't know who we're going to throw exactly, but I think I'll have one or two innings in me, and I think Logan might have one or two. So depending on what we can do there, we might be able to piece up a close game. Might even We, we might be able to win. Um, and then obviously we want, we want to make a state run this year. Honestly, I feel like with how we played last year against Center Grove, we had them on the ropes three innings in a row with runners in scoring position, and it was our chance to, like, walk it off, not just take the lead. Oh, okay. So, I mean, we had the bases loaded with no outs down one, um, and we ended up grinding into a double play, and that kind of hurt us. But I think with the amount of chances that we had last year to win, I wouldn't say that it's unreasonably fair to say that we can definitely win this game, uh, or that game, excuse me. Um, so going into sectionals, I feel like last year – we had zero confidence. We just wanted to play them. We, we wanted to play them well. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think going into the sectionals this year, we know that we can beat them. And now, obviously, it's going to take a perfect game. But I think we have the ability to do that. Um, Logan's came a long way on the mound. So I think that if I go out there and give us a quality start, and then we have Logan come in behind me or Drew Doty come in behind me and mix it up, I think we have a chance. Um, it's going to come down to who hits. Uh, obviously, they have a loaded pitching staff. So... Honestly, I think us and Center Grove will make a run. So if we get past them, I'm pretty I'm pretty excited for the road that will come. Um, but other than that, I just want to see all my guys kind of ha enjoy their last year. Uh, like I said, I've grown up with all of them. So this is kind of my last run with them. And that, yeah. I, like, I, I've started to come to realize that, that it's like this is the end of the road for them, and it is the end of the, end of the road for us too. Yeah. So um, I'm excited. It's going to be a good year. I think, like I said, conference, sectionals, county, I think those are our big, big points this year. Um, I'm also looking forward to the victory field game. I was about to say that. You so were... hopefully we can uh, we can take a win home against Franklin Central that night, April 29th, by the way. Uh, so if you guys want to pop out to that, go right ahead. But uh, I think those are going to be our main three goals this year. Yeah, so you'll have you, – have you ever played on victory field before? I have not. I have not. So, so you'll have some experience there. Hopefully you'll get to use that experience yep. in the uh, state game. Yeah. Going back to the pitching, like, one to two innings, do you think that would really throw off the other team because every time they'd go up to bat, they'd be facing a different guy? Yeah, so I remember, like, when we were younger and we played Center Grove teams, none of us would ever see the lineup twice. Like, I would go two innings, then we'd throw Jace for two innings, then we'd throw Nolan – or not Nolan, Drew for two innings, and just kind of mixing speed, mixing eyes, like righty, lefty, righty, lefty, righty, lefty, stuff like that. Um, CG's obviously super, super dedicated to what they do. Um, they're a great team. So they're going to figure you out eventually. I mean, the entire team's going Division One. So I think just the ability to mix it up, have some fun, and to go right at them is what we need. So so what about that game last night? Obviously, you guys took the dub 7-4, to four, correct? Yep. How, how'd that go for you? What, what were you, some things you thought you did well, and not just you but the team, and some things maybe you could have done better? Uh, personally, I thought I had a pretty good night at the plate. Uh, I went 2-3 for three with a home run and a walk as well. Um, as a team, I feel like we competed really, really well. Um, we, we battled some adversity early on. Uh, we took an early 4-0 lead at the top, or bottom of the first inning. And then um, we did not score for five innings. So 
it kind of got, we kind of got like lackadaisical, I'd say, or we got comfortable. Um, and then just the ability to kind of turn it back on and get that, get that switch going, get going. That was super, super nice to have. Cause I would, I would lie, I'd be lying if playing, if I didn't say Plainfield had us on our, uh, like tails, but just kind of the ability to battle that out and go wrap up a first conference win, get that first win under our belt. That was huge. Um, I think I got a little impatient at the end of the game. I, I had hit a home run previously and I tried to hit one again. So I think I just needed to like stay within myself a little bit. Um, and then on the mound, kind of the same thing. I got in a groove and then I started trying to like overthrow, underthrow, stuff like that, trying to just do too much. Yeah. So I think just the having to stay within myself is something that I'll work on for the next game. For sure. Yeah, and we uh, talked earlier about team goals. What kind of personal goals do you have just like this year? Mm -hmm. Um, personally, I want to repeat as Gatorade Player of the Year. I want to repeat First Team All-State, repeat Johnson County Player of the Year, and I want to repeat as the Max Preps Player of the Year. Um, those are four things that I've kind of gotten set on. Um, I think that if I do what I did on the mound last year, that'll definitely help me. And right now I'm off to a hotter start than I was last year at the plate. So I think if I just continue this upscale, I think it's a possibility. Um, I would also like to see myself make or uh, make a run for like the national Gatorade Player of the Year. Um, they take all 50 kids from the from the state player, and then they kind of like vote it off. So last year I finished like somewhere in the middle, like the 25th rank or something like that for uh, the national award. But as a sophomore, to just to put that into perspective. <laughs> so actually, last year Dylan Lesko was the first junior to ever win the national Gatorade Player of the Year. So I want to take it. He's a senior this year, so I want to take it from him and be the second junior to ever win the national Gatorade Player of the Year. That's kind of like my that's my big goal for this year. Um, I also want to like um, solidify my spot at one. Um, right now, I'm number one on Baseball America, number one on PBR, and number two on Perfect Game. So I just kind of want to become the number one overall unanimous. And I think those are just kind of like my main my main points for this year. So definitely, that's a lot to look at and mm -hmm. you definitely got to set your goals high 100 percent for sure so what is a what's a pre-game routine don't not just like 30 minutes before a game maybe like an entire day pre-game routine for max clark look like uh so for me on game days i don't really change anything in the morning uh, i get up super early i get up like 5 30 every single day and i stretch out and go for a run and then i'll make myself breakfast um show up to class and then I have first period weights so i take a mobile or i do a little bit more more mobility on game days in the weight room then um, I do lifting. So I'll, I'll hit my, like, my primary lift um, really, really hard. And then I'll do one superset of the next. And then I'll go into mobility, especially if I'm pitching on that day. Um, and then I just kind of go about my day, have a good lunch. Um, and then after school, we go up to the field. We all eat Subway, get dressed. Um, I kind of start locking in right around 2.50ish, 3 o'clock. Um, I put in AirPods and like sit on the bench for an hour. And then I start rolling out, massage gun, bands. Um, and then I'll go to the cages. Um, I start really simple, just taking some light dry swings. And then I'll do some front, uh, front toss or soft toss. And then I will take a few rounds off the machine. Um, I'll go back in the dugout, kind of chill out, kind of lock in again. Um, and then I'll go out and do my arm routine, um, especially on a day that I'm pitching all long toss. Um, and then from there, I just kind of get ready to play. Um, start getting a little, having hot, getting hype with the uh, with the team, and then we're ready to go. Nice. So it's really a whole routine. It's mm -hmm. not really just a, oh, we're gonna go eat as a team, yep. show up to the game. Yep. It's like actual get ready. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, I think when you're playing at the level that you are, you people got to realize like you have to live as an athlete. Mm -hmm. Like your entire life has to have this consistency to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So switch gears again. Okay. Who's got the best walk up song? Right, honestly, right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go with Jace Fowler. He has a, oh, uh, I bet you won't. I don't know. I, I don't know by. I, I, I sure went to the game last yeah. night, so I heard it. That was yeah. <laughs> I don't know who it's by, but that might be that might be my favorite right now. Um, X also has a good one with X gonna give it to you. Mm -hmm. um, he had that last year. I loved it. I'm glad he brought it back. And then uh, Drew Doty has a good pitching walkout. Uh, Homecoming by Kanye. Okay. So those those are my top three right now. I got you. What's yours? Spiral by Twenty One. Sp but you won't put that in the top three. No. I, I think I think I think it'd be my I think it'd be number two. Okay. But like <laughs> I think Jace definitely takes the unanimous one. But I'll take I'll put mine at two. Did you have any other um, options that you almost chose? I almost did Inner Sandman. Um, that was my brother's, and it's kind of like it would have been cool. And it's also like super like oh he's that guy kind of thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
Um, and then another one that I was thinking of is uh, PSA by Jay-Z, where it's like allowed me to reintroduce myself. That part, that would have gotten. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm going to do that next year for senior year. I think you got to I think you got to switch it up completely and go with uh, the loud and heavy. You know, oh, the, the oh. big country guy of comes course, out. You just know he's over here talking about country. <laughs> Jeez. That's what Henry needs to do. He I does. was I was talking to um, Devin Tyler because mm. I have study hall with him before this. Yeah, he said that you would either say Jace Fowler or Price Rucker at the best. Dude, Price has a good one too. I love Prices. I don't even know what it's called. But oh, I, I, love I it. yeah, that was uh, it's that's an old song. yeah, it's an oldie song. Yeah. Ah, I'll remember it in like twenty minutes. Yeah, so, uh, you we've heard a lot. Of, some speculation about maybe a Flow Bros podcast with you and Jace yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. Xavier and uh -huh. all those guys. Who's got the best hair on the team? Oh, 100% me. It's not even close. It's not even close. It's not even close. <laughs> Nolan's got some. I, I'm going to take Nolan number two because um, he has like the curls. But you, yeah. know, you can't go wrong with the, blow, uh, the blonde flow. So I'm, I'm going to have to take myself on this one. <laughs> so um, a lot of players, they uh, – have their choice between gum or sunflower seeds, whatever they want in the dugout. What what, what would you pick? The sunflower seeds, hundred percent. I am I am an absolute sunflower seed fiend. Oh my lord, we go through so many bags per game. Me and Cooper were just sitting on the we were sitting on the bucket yesterday for a game, just absolutely munching on some cracked pepper flunt, flunt, oh sunflower seeds. So uh, I'm definitely a seeds guy. So what's your favorite flavor then? Cracked pepper or takis. Taki oh, dude, they are insane. I didn't know they made Taki. But they get seeds. they get your hands so gross. I've uh, seen I've seen the ranch sunflower seeds. Are those good or so good? They also make a buffalo ranch, and it's like buffalo. Oh, I've had dipped those. in ranch. Oh, it's so that, good. That is a good. Those flavor. are gas. Are you are you the type of person to do like just a few sunflower seeds at a time, or do you like oh, oh a I bunch? Pack a fat lip or something. <laughs> <seeds, bro. laughs> like, like it's a whole yeah, a fat lip or sunflower seeds. That's funny. You like stuff them in the back pocket before oh, you go yeah. out in the field. Yep. Yep. He'll just be at the mound going. Yep. <laughs> uh, so do you have a greatest play? And it doesn't have to be high school. It can be anywhere. Maybe you're on the world stage. Maybe you're right in Mercer Field. Do you have, like, a greatest play? I think my greatest play does come from high school. Um, it was last year in the sectional game. Uh, Caden Curry hit one about 10 miles in the air. Um, and I thought it was gone. Dead center. Um, I started running back. And I actually robbed a home run off of him that I, it, at the time it saved the game. Um, we were tied three to three. And I went full extension up over the fence, brought it back down with no outs, and it would have like, oh, it would have been a huge momentum changer for them. Yeah. But just that, that might have been the greatest play that I've ever like done or seen. Like that, that was, it was ridiculous. I don't even know how I did it. I was, I was just kind of reacting, I would say. But that was definitely my greatest play. Um, and I wish there was a video of that out there somewhere, <laughs> but um, I imagine there's got to be. Yeah, and there's like there's one on my phone, but it's like from the live stream, so you have to like zoom in <laughs> on me, like way out in the outfield. But that is 100% my greatest play. I'm supposed to mention there will be a live stream. I think it's um, the Whiteland game, the 20th. We're gonna have a live stream. So if you can't make that game, which I hope you can come out and be in the student section, and sit out there with us. But if you can't, be sure to check that out. We'll yeah. have Thomas Crow commentating the game i'm sure bingo bingo bongo thomas bingo, Crow. bingo bongo the voice of franklin athletics <laughs> <laughs> thomas is actually back there doing the switcher for us today so thanks for doing that thomas um you're you're a highly touted prospect but you still choose to play another sport in football mm. why is that i you know i grew up playing football um obviously the only year i took off was sophomore year um, I just absolutely love football. Um, there's nothing really like a Friday Night Lights. I will say that nothing has gotten me more excited than a Friday Night Football game, even like huge baseball games. But just kind of going out there and all of my like kids that I grew up with in school, all of my friends that I grew up with in school, those were they all play football. So I kind of felt detached from them when I wasn't playing. Um, I'm also just like I want to do as much for Franklin as I can. So kind of going out there and competing for Franklin on the football field, I feel like that's my duty as well. Um, just everything about football and Friday nights is amazing. So I've always loved the sport. Um, obviously, it's an injury risk, but it's I, I feel like it's – like I shouldn't say it's worth it, but like it's just – I can't it's, – it's so fun. I love football. 
I think everybody, and yeah, for the love of football in the game, I mean, yeah. football is awesome. I had so much fun playing football, mm-hmm. but I think everybody should play more than one sport. Oh, yeah. I mean, the best athletes in the world were all three sport, two sport athletes in high school. Um, I feel like if you're prioritizing one sport at age 15, 16, I, there's just no point. I, I mean, like senior year and you're super touted, like I would get it, but. Well, I mean, and he's still going to yeah, play and, football. And I'm, yeah, and I'm still going to play football. So, I mean, like, I you, there's. You're just going to become such a better athlete when you're playing multi 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 sports. So definitely, and when you talk to like a scout, mm-hmm. like a professional scout, yeah, are they going to tell you that, or are they want you just? To oh, they love it. They, they love, love it. it. Yeah. Um, my agent was huge. He's like, you're playing football again this year, right? He came to our sectional game, um, and he was super like all for it. That's he awesome. was supporting the team. It's awesome. And then, um, especially like the, like college recruiters. Oh, they love their three sport, two sport athletes. Absolutely love them. Definitely. Ian, uh, so you playing football, I was commentating that Whiteland game. Mm. <laughs> that was, that 84-yard touchdown of yours was probably the greatest call that I've ever had. That, dude, it was so much fun. I went back and watched the, uh, the live stream like, like a couple months ago, and that was a great call. So and, well done. Um, what was really like going through your head as soon as you caught that ball and you knew you were going? Oh, I was like, oh, my God, I caught it. Oh, I caught it. Because I, I didn't see the ball at first because I, I was set on beating the kid off of the break. And I looked up and I was like, okay, I might be, able, I could either dive and, and like ensure the catch, but then I would have, we would have to drive another 40 yards or <laughs> I can try and be a hero and catch it. Oh, I just stuck out there, bobbled it once, picked it up and just, I was losing my mind. Like even my friends brought it up a couple of times. Like I, you can see me put my hand up like three different yeah. times. Cause I just kept getting hyper and hyper <laughs> at the, uh, the closer I got to the end zone. And then I just killed Kai Perta. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to bring that up. Put the clip on there. I yeah. will play this for you guys. That was, and then I just killed Kai Perta. <laughs> I felt so bad. But that, I was so hyped. And, and all the blood rushing through my body is awesome. Oh, he's going to complain that, is, that we did him so dirty. Yeah, I felt so bad because you guys got a perfect <laughs> shot of it. Dude, it is the, uh, it's the funniest thing because w- I'm on the line. Mm-hmm. And as a lineman, when, you, when we get the ball and we start a drive down on like the 20-yard line, you're like, Gosh dang it! Cause, yeah, because that takes it out of you. Just play after yeah, play. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. When someone like you goes and makes an eighty-yard play, it's like, oh thank God. Yeah, now you're thank you so yeah, much. Like, and like you got to run and do the PAT, and I'm yeah, not in yeah. shape to run eighty yards. But like once you get down there, <laughs> it's you, like you oh, we're money. We're good. We're clean. <laughs> yeah, you in that video of Kai, you said it was perfect shot. I think the only thing better on that play was the picture. I think Lauren took. It's of you oh, catching the ball like this. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. That's awesome. Great picture. So, is there anybody, back to baseball, is okay. there anybody you try to, like, model your game after professional-wise? Uh, two guys, yeah. Um, so, Bryce Harper, obviously. Um, he's been kind of my professional comp. Uh, like, when I talk to a scout or when I talk to some guys, um, that's just kind of who they see my, my game in. Um, so, I kind of like the way Bryce has battled adversity in his career. Um, he's always kind of been hated on. Um, yeah. Not that I have. I have a, <laughs> loads of support. But... Just like the way that he can overcome everything that comes his way is something that I admire and something that I try to bring into my game when I do face adversity. Um, I also think that we have very similar like approaches to the game. Mm-hmm. And then another guy that I look at is uh, Tim Anderson, the shortstop for the White Sox. Okay. Um, I love his flair and his passion for the game. Yeah, um, He's one of those guys who does everything for his city, his family, his town, whatever. Um, it's never really about himself. It's it's it is for himself, but he's like the very last priority. So just kind of like the way that he goes about himself on the field. Um, he's like known as like the flare guy. He always yeah. like he has the coolest bath lips. He's oh. got the coolest cleats, stuff like that. Like coolest walk off. Yes, that was awesome. That was awesome. Um, so like I try and bring in both. Um, I think Bryce has just done a lot for me and like the ability to face adversity. And then also, obviously that's kind of who my game style is like. And then Tim just has all the, the cool stuff, like the drip. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, you met either of these guys? You ever talked to them? Uh, so Tim Anderson actually has the same agent as me. So oh, really? I, Yeah, awesome. I've met Tim Anderson. Um, I was actually going to go work out with him in the winter, but he, he had reported to spring training earlier. Dang. And then spring training got canceled, so like, we, we could have <laughs> we could have worked out. But um, I'm going to try and uh, reach up with Tim here soon in the summer um, after his season's over. So, no, you're kind of a White Sox fan. World Series prediction? Oh, it's, I, it's really early, but mm. raisin four. Yeah, honestly, I think I'm going to go with the Rays this year. They're pretty good, man. But I, you know, <laughs> uh, I think they just traded their uh, 
They just traded Austin Meadows. Yeah. Though, so. I'm I'm just kidding. I'm not taking the Rays in the World Series. Um, <laughs> well, don't take the Reds. I'm a Reds yeah. fan. And... Yeah, both of your guys like the Rays were good in like 2019. Come on, man. Like it's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got you got or is a, or I'd say we're a little whatever. past that now. Yeah, I, I think I am going to take I'm going to take the White Sox getting to at least the championship series. Okay. So um, they may not make the World Series, but I'll take them in the in the uh, Final Four. Fair enough. And then do you have a favorite team, or not favorite team, a team you're most excited to face? Obviously, you're, I'm sure you're excited to go back and get Center Grove. Yep. Is there it's, anybody else? Center Grove's going to be awesome. Um, Mooresville, I have a little bit of like a bad taste in my mouth against Mooresville. Um, that was kind of like my one rocky start of the year. So I kind of want to go give it to them. I gave it to them pretty well in the sectional game, but I want to <laughs> go do it again. Yeah. Um, just kind of like satisfy that terrible performance in my first game last year. Um Center Grove, that's a no doubter. And um, at Center Grove, yeah. you can see that new field. That's, I've seen yeah. pictures. It's wild, man. And that's where the county games can be at, right? Yep. So Saturday, Saturday at one and three. Um, go ahead and show out at Center Grove. <laughs> but um Center Grove and Mooresville, I'd say those are my two biggest right now. I would say there's nothing like beating a team that you should have beat the year before but lost. Like, we've done that twice this year, mm-hmm. and it was just felt so good. Yeah, I mean, obviously when you look at it on paper, I mean, Center Grove, Center Grove. But I feel like we have always wanted it more than them because they have walked in repeatedly um, acting like they knew they were going to win. And, I mean, respectively, they we kind of just let them beat us three times last year. Um, so kind of going into this year, I think we want it way more than them, and they don't really know it yet. And by the time they know, it's going to be too late. So that's kind of what we're rocking with from a mentality standpoint. Well, I hope they don't watch this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, yeah. Then they will know. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll block them off my Snapchat story when I plug we'll, this. We'll just block the, yeah. the YouTube account yeah. or something. Absolutely no CG fans. <laughs> all right, Max. Well, I don't have anything else. Nick, did you have anything else? I don't have anything. I think we covered all of it. I think we did. That was pretty good, guys. Well yeah, done. Well, thanks for being on here with yeah, us and absolutely. answering our questions. And, yeah. Thank this you for having me. Inside Franklin Athletics. Like and subscribe.